literally the middle of May and it is tiffing it down. Oh my goodness, not the weather I was expecting for this vlog at all. Boots have had a little polish, Laurie is all packed, it's time to go and get the main man himself ready and then I'll tell you a little bit about what's going on in this vlog or the recent title. Okay, so you've seen from the title of this video that today is all about my first spillers lesson, which I'll explain more about what exactly that means when I'm not getting rained on, but I got at it. And it just reminded me of last year when I had my similar opportunity with Horse Quest and I had that lesson with Sam Griffiths. There's a vlog on that, you'll only remember that if you've been around for a while, so I will uh, link it below. It was the most glorious day. It was so sunny. The whole day we were like on the edge of sweating. It was beautiful. And here we are. Atty looks like pretty pajamaed. It's not what I was expecting. <laughs> Obviously praying that we don't 
across any other traffic down a road like this. Um, yeah, this is all a ride away, so very jealous. Okay, so here we are. I'm on board the main man in the arena. This was before we warmed up and I just thought I would take it right back to the beginning and kind of walk you through what we learned in the lesson, give you a bit of a voiceover. I know you found it helpful last time and hopefully you can see what we got up to. So here is, I think, our very first trot of the session and in Chirati style, for whatever reason, whenever we go out show jumping like to lessons or clinics, he comes out really behind the leg on the flat, which is such a hard one because as soon as he starts jumping, he completely transforms. So as you can see here, he was a little bit sluggish, my legs were working very hard. The first thing that we did under Harry's guidance was basically pop in lots of little circles around fences, keep things interesting, keep them thinking, so we weren't just going in straight lines and he wasn't just falling asleep. So that actually started to help really, really quickly. Here is a couple on the other rain. I won't bore you for too long with trot work, but I just thought it'd be interesting to see how we warmed up and how it was equal on both reins. And I just think he's looking so well at the moment. He's looking happy, he's looking healthy. I think he's looking good. I might be biased, but I think he is. Okay, so now I've had an initial warm up in walk, trot and canter, it's time to have a play over some jumps and we went straight into some little uprights. Harry had never met us before this session, I'd never met him, so obviously we did have a chat through what level I'm at, what I'm doing, what my aims are, but it was really great for him to look at Atty completely from scratch. So he started with just a couple of little jumps and uh, quickly as he began to gauge how Atty lit up when we started jumping they went up and we kept going from there. With the initial warm up over, it was time to think about stringing some fences together. I'd explained to Harry at the start of the session that really, for me, it was about trying to get Atty picking up his feet. Obviously, we did go clear, so I think in our first B, Novice of the Season, check out that vlog, I'm very proud, guys. But show jumping is probably one of our weaker phases. Sometimes the poles can fall, so I don't want to get complacent, and that is what it was all about. So we were starting to now string together a couple of little combinations, some spreads, some oxes. Spoiler alert, that spread you just watched me jump, you're going to watch me miss at that about 20 times in this vlog. I just could not see a stride to that one for some reason. I mean, not to fangle over my own horse, but come on, that was such a nice jump. Anyway, as you can see here, we landed a little bit disunited and all over the place, and Harry's bit of advice was, keep him like that, leave it like that. And this is something that came on to be such a key part of the lesson and something that I'd never really thought about much before at home, is that there were times, and there are times in training at home, where Atty lands a bit disunited, a little bit all over the place, and a bit of a heap, and my instinct as a rider is to put him in trot, pick him up get him in a nice canter and go again but what I took from this session so much is that when you're out competing that's not an option you know you can't fiddle with them too much you can't mess about because you don't have time you'll get time faults so it was actually really good to practice almost leaving him when he gets himself into a mess so he has to get out of it Yeah. 
scales. about to expose me as a rider. Triples, combinations where Atty and I are famously more likely to have poles. I just fire him, I can't hold, I can't wait. I just almost like fire out of nerves, go for these non-existent long ones, but then actually ha end up having more poles. It was good for that to be pointed out that I am kind of the reason we have troubles there. Like my own riding, when I think I'm helping the situation, I am making it worse and it helped me ride triples a lot more effectively. See here, I'm about to do the exact same thing again. Really, it just had to be spelled out to me that I was not riding these right. So now we're on to our final little pop around the course, which was quite beefy by this point. And honestly, the way that Atty's been jumping was just blowing me out of the park. Like he's really found that love for it and that quickness with his feet. But this was also a chance for me to correct my horrific triple riding, which as you can see here, I still didn't do. <laughs> I still didn't do it. But actually having that hard proof in training, the way that I was riding triples was not working, was really useful. It was black and white. There was no denying that I needed to change the way I was doing it because I was having poles. So it was really great to end the session by coming around and just riding it a bit more relaxed, not worrying, not letting myself get stressed that we weren't gonna make the distances because he is 16 hands and he's very clever with his legs. And it meant that it rode a whole lot better. Okay, so I haven't really filmed much of an outro for this vlog because I feel like we sort of rounded it up as we went along. I spoke through what I learned as I was learning it. I think that's probably the most useful way to watch vlogs like this because then you have a visual aid, you know, what I'm being taught as I'm learning it. So I hope you enjoyed that style. Um, but obviously I have to come on here really quickly to say a huge, huge thank you to Spillers and Harry for this incredible opportunity. The fact that this is only the first of four lessons is just amazing because not only did I have a good lesson, which was well, well needed. <laughs> I cannot remember the last time Matty and I had a show jump lesson, but also I can go back three more times and meet Harry again and he knows me and he knows Atty now so we can continue to progress so that's what's really really great about it I'm yeah like I said very very grateful to Spillers for this opportunity and obviously to Harry for his time as well um like I said I sort of went through most things as we were doing it but in case you missed it the main things that I kind of learned in that session were about not always worrying if it wasn't picture perfect in training because when you're out of competition you don't have the time or the focus to make everything picture perfect. It's all too often that we come out of competitions and we say, oh, that was a little bit scrappy. But sometimes it's good to practice in a less than perfect way so that when it is a little bit scrappy, you're prepared. And it's not like a, oh my God, it's all gonna go downhill now. Also great to be sort of pulled up on my riding when I get a little bit nervous and apprehensive coming into a triple where I would sometimes have a pole like more often than on a single fence. It was great to be reminded that actually you're not helping. <laughs> I was just not helping by trying to attack it too much and then having it down, which made me try to attack it even more than having it down. So I needed to take a step back and be reminded that Atty is more than capable. Just ride like you would any other fence. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like showcase it. Atty was jumping incredibly. Like you've just seen the same clips that I have. He's always been a good show jumper, but he's never really cared so much about picking up his feet. And I feel like he's really starting to get to grips with that now. So. Yeah, 
buzzing about that. Cannot wait to see how it translates when we get back out of venting, which is very soon. And finally, a huge thank you to you guys for bearing with me because you've been hounding on Instagram. I know that this lesson is now like two and a bit weeks ago before this vlog has come out. So I'm really sorry. My editing games have not been very good. I've been uh, rather busy, but I hope you enjoyed this one. And obviously Lulu's competition vlog is also yet to come which i know is another one you guys want to see thank you so much for everyone who's stuck around and yeah liking commenting subscribing all of that really, really helps me because i'm about to be a very broke university student <laughs> anyway i'm gonna stop making you feel bad of me and i'm gonna see you soon bye